Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at this new lamp that I've received uh, for review. Uh, it's from a company called BenQ or Benk, I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced. And it's described as an e-reading lamp. So I think primarily uh, for those of us that use a tablet or a Kindle uh, to read books or magazines. Not necessarily primarily for model making at all, but it'll be interesting to see uh, how its functions perform when we're making something like this ship uh, on the bench. So uh, by coincidence, a few weeks ago, I was looking for some new lighting for the shed, both to illuminate the work so that I could see what I was doing, but also to try and improve uh, the video quality, as you probably know, I've gone over to HD production uh, in the videos. Uh, and I just wanted to be able to put as much light as I could on the subject, which helps with the cameras and the quality of the image that you're able to take. Uh, so that was what I was looking for, really. And it was very coincidental that uh, the offer came through uh, to take a look at this particular lamp. So we'll get it out of the box and put it together and let's see what it can do. Okay, so we'll see what's in the box. It's pretty substantial packaging, really. So we've um, an instruction manual with a hex key inside. This looks like the uh, adapter, transformer, So that's interesting. We get um, a set of different plug adapters for the main uh, plug here. I shan't be using any of those. So there's the base, which is very heavy. This isn't going to topple over in a hurry. It's very substantial. I don't know what that's made out of. That's an interesting warning. Don't drop it on your foot. And I can vouch for that. That would cause quite a bit of damage if you did that. That's a pretty good quality cable. The engineering here is pretty good. I don't know whether this is steel or some sort of alloy, but it's very strong. So we've got a little knurled nut on the uh, pivot here at the bottom, which will obviously just uh, tighten the pivot onto the stem at the bottom. So we've just got a nylon bush in there okay so let's check out these controls uh, we've got this ring at the back and the dial knob further forward so there's no on off switch not a conventional on off switch anyway the lamp switched on using this ring just touching it on and off and it also controls two modes apparently, so if we hold that down and we get an orange light, this is a book reading mode, so it's quite bright. And if we hold it again, we get a green light, which is slightly dimmer and more diffused really, which is supposed to be used for uh, reading ebooks on your tablet or Kindle or something like that. For my purposes, I'll be just using the uh, brightest light I can really. I like to get these things illuminated. And as you know, uh, from watching the builds, there's some pretty fine detail on these models. So you do need as much light as you can get. So the knob at the front here has got two functions. Uh, one is to dim the lamp just by turning it like that. I'm just pressing it down changes the mode of that to change the color temperature so that's a warm uh, light coming there through to a bright light so that's actually probably brighter than most daylight bulbs uh, it's probably the mode that I would use the most often for doing modeling so I suppose once it's set up like that you wouldn't really have to do much else to it. So the difference I think for me working in the uh, shed, making the YouTube videos, 
is not actually to help me to see the modeling I think it will help the actual camera work because uh, the camera won't have to work so hard to pick up the detail so hopefully the quality of the videos would improve uh, with this brighter lighting on the uh, models as I'm building them so uh, that remains to be seen hopefully you'll see a difference in upcoming videos that the uh, video quality will improve as a result of the lighting provided by this lamp. So there we are, it's certainly a stylish and uh, very well made lamp. The materials are first rate really. Uh, the question is I suppose whether or not it's too good uh, for me out here in the shed. I can imagine it getting covered with paint, uh, overspray and other bits of grime and dirt uh, and I can imagine that it's going to get purloined uh, and will find its way indoors into the study where I think it will probably get more use from the various settings uh, for the e-reading uh, function on the lamp. Okay, so there we are. If you're on the lookout uh, for a new lamp for modelling purposes or just general craft work, uh, this is one certainly to look at, uh, although... Uh, possibly the cost, which I think uh, is around about the £160-£170 mark uh, in the UK, uh, might put uh, quite a few people off. It's certainly something that I would have to really consider hard before I made that sort of investment. And particularly for me, the functions uh, for modelling, I wouldn't use most of them. So you'd have to consider, I suppose, whether or not you're going to get the use out of all the various uh, lamp settings that we've got on this light. But I'll leave the product information in the description below if you want to have a look uh, out for them yourselves and do a bit more uh, research. So I'll be interested to see uh, really what impact this light has on the video quality uh, when I come to do the next video, which will be a Vulcan uh, part 10, I think, uh, in the next few days. So look out for that and hopefully we'll get some better resolution of the video content as a result. So thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you found that useful and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.